Hi everyone, The Gay Guide here, and today we're going to talk about consent. Because I am going to talk a lot about sex on this channel, simply because I had a lot of questions about sex growing up and no one to answer them for me. Uh, so before we start talking about all the good details about sex, it makes sense to start at the beginning. And every sexual encounter needs to start with some form of consent. The best definition I found for consent comes from the University of Michigan that defines consent as a clear and unambiguous agreement expressed outwardly through mutually understandable words or actions to engage in a particular activity. Now, the particular activity we're talking about today is sex. Consent at its core is a permission to proceed with whatever sex act is about to occur. And consent can come in many different forms, both verbal and nonverbal, and also many different strengths from someone outwardly saying, yes, please insert your penis inside of me, <laughs> to the sort of laid back, going with the flow, uh, definitely responding, kissing back, you know, basically really being into it, nonverbal sort of indication that yes, please do keep doing what you're doing. And it's always both partners' responsibility to make sure that they have consent to proceed with whatever activity is going on with their partner. Uh, and if that activity is changing in the middle of a session, it's always good to reestablish that consent to make sure that both people are, are good and okay with, with what's happening. Now, it, that doesn't have to be sort of a formal, do you give me permission to proceed sort of question that you ask in the middle of sex, but just a nice, simple, sexy, are you okay? Is this okay? How does that feel? Like that's just, just sort of checking in with your partner, making sure they're also enjoying this activity because sex is meant to be enjoyed between two people. So it's always good to communicate and make sure that both people are having a good time. Consent must always be given freely and never out of some form of coercion or never out of feelings of obligation uh, to proceed. A good example there is if you were talking to someone on Grindr and you meet up with them and you bring them home and you know, you're in the middle of, of getting hot and heavy and you get really nervous and you really decide you don't want to proceed any further. You have every right to say stop, say I'm uncomfortable, I don't want to proceed anymore and they need to respect those wishes regardless of what you guys talked about beforehand, what time it was, how far he traveled to get to you, all those things don't matter. If you're not comfortable, you have every right to not proceed. And you should never feel obligated to proceed just because you talked about something beforehand. Because that's another cool thing about consent is that it can be revoked at any time and for any reason. And the, the second you feel uncomfortable, if you want to stop, then you have every right to stop what's going on, regardless of, of anything that was discussed or, or happened before. Another good example of this is if you uh, are enjoying your time with someone and you know the activity is up to a certain point and he starts getting a little rough and it makes you uncomfortable and you're not enjoying yourself anymore. You have every right to say, hey, ease up or hey, stop, I'm uncomfortable, I'm not enjoying this. Because again, sex is supposed to be enjoyed by everybody and if you're not having a good time, then you have every right to say something and, and change the situation. So those are the basics of how consent works. Uh, there's actually a funny video that I also found on YouTube that uses the example of offering someone tea as a way to explain consent. I'll include a link for you here. Uh, but that video doesn't cover some of the other topics that I want to talk about regarding consent. Um, so I do have a few more things to cover. The first is that there are a lot of persuasive people out there who have a lot of tricks up their sleeve to try and get into your pants. But just because someone is persuasive doesn't mean that they're a bad person. So if you are connecting well with someone and they're, they're being very persuasive and you sort of, you are attracted to them, then by all means, grab a condom and have some fun. Um, but the problems start occurring when these persuasive people also start introducing alcohol into the situation or even other drugs to sort of lower inhibitions even further to get that yes that they're looking for. They may persuade you into agreeing to move forward, but if you've had enough to drink and you're not really thinking clearly, then that agreement should not be considered consent. Now, I'm also a realist, and I know how bars work. You know, you go to bars and you have a few drinks and you lighten up and you meet people and sometimes you go home with those people. We've all gone home with someone drunk or taken someone drunk home. You know, does that mean that we are, have all been taken advantage of and have taken advantage of people? You know, probably not, and I would hope not. It's, it's sort of a gray area of when, you know, the line is crossed that it should no longer be considered consent uh, if you're agreeing to, to an activity. So my best advice there is try and avoid that gray area altogether. And if you're going out to have fun, then go out and have fun. If you're going out and expecting maybe to meet someone and go home with them, then maybe limit yourself to three drinks. 
And if you already had a few drinks, more, more than that, and you do meet someone and you're having some fun, then great, make out with them in the bar, get a phone number and agree to meet up sober sometime later when you're, when you're in a better state of mind. One other thing I want to talk about is when your sexual encounters begin to involve some more risky behavior. Things like bondage or toys or even certain role plays where there may be an increased risk of bodily harm. Now anytime uh, these risks are involved in sex play, uh, there are some established protocols for ensuring that everyone understands the situation, the risks involved, and has given proper consent to move forward. Now, there are two main, more in-depth consent protocols that are commonly used in the BDSM community. Uh, one is Safe, Sane, and Consensual, or SSC, and the other is the RAC system. I forget what RAC stands for. Uh, but anyway, so What's the Safe Word is a great kink channel on YouTube, and they cover both of these consent protocols in great deal, detail in certain videos. So I'll put links for you here in case you're interested in more of those in-depth consent protocols. And as What's a Safe Word always reminds us at the end of their videos, if you're going to be involved in kinky sex acts, it's always important to have a safe word. A safe word is a word that anyone can use at any time and everyone must stop any activity immediately. And consent is considered withdrawn until a discussion is had with a person who used the safe word and that consent is verbally re-given to proceed again. A safe word should be a word that you would never normally utter in the middle of a sexual encounter. So if your partner suddenly yells taxidermy in the middle of some action, you know that they mean business and you need to immediately stop what you're doing. And this leads me to my final thought, which is that you are always in control of what happens to your own body. If at any point that you become uncomfortable with ha what's happening, then you have every right to say, no, stop. And your partner has to respect that request. If they don't respect it the first time, then repeat it louder and louder and louder as necessary until they stop doing what they're doing. If someone proceeds with a sexual act without getting clear consent, then that is rape, plain and simple. If you think you may have been the victim of rape and you're in the U.S., you should call the National Sexual Assault Hotline at 1-800-656-4673. If you're not in the U.S. and you need a number to call, you can ask me in my comment section below or send me an email to thegayguide at gmail.com and I'll help you find your local number to call. I hope you found this video helpful. If so, please give me a thumbs up down below. That really helps with my channel growth. And subscribe to stay up to date with my upcoming topics. Uh, down below, let's keep it light. And why don't you tell me what you're doing to celebrate for Pride this month? Uh, but if you do have any other questions for me, you can leave them in my comment sections below, or you can email me at thegayguide at gmail.com. And in the meantime, get out there and be who you needed growing up.